Hey, and welcome to month 18 in quarantine, or at least it feels that way. Um, hey guys, I have a few minutes between calls, so I thought I'd record this quick video to talk about social proof and how you can use it whether you are launching your very first product or if you're an established brand, how to really crank this up so that you, when someone goes to buy your product, it's a home run. So how can you actually use social proof more effectively to sell more of your product? That's really what this video is about. So earlier today, I was on a group coaching call with our product launchpad students, and we were talking about as a few of them are getting ready to launch in the next two to three weeks. And so the topic that I was coaching on today is how if you are like just releasing your product, how can you build social proof? And why is this even important? So when people go to your Kickstarter page or people go to your Shopify store, it doesn't really matter what stage you're at. It matters that this needs to be applied. Okay. So if you're a current seller, this is something you can, you are absolutely not tapping into the way that you need to. So when you put the conversion mechanism together, be it your storefront with checkout process or Kickstarter campaign, it's important to know that because you can't actually speak to a customer to convey how awesome your product is and show them how great the product is, like you can't physically do that. So the goal of your product page is to use the space you have available to show and prove and convince someone that your product is going to do what you say it will do in their life, it's going to get them the results, it is absolutely worth the money, and make them want it and desire it, okay? So there's quite a bit for that page to do. And one of the ways you do that, it's not about should the button be green or should the button be over here? Like, yeah, user experience and conveying information is important, but what's even more important is building trust. So as you go to launch and scale, see what I did there? Um, as you go to launch and scale products online, um, you're going to go from your customers being your mom and your best friend to starting to play around with organic traffic in Facebook groups to paid advertising. And what you're going to find is the more removed you get from the equation in terms of like when you start to do paid ads, you're driving traffic to people and bringing people to your website who you've never met before. They've never heard of your brand before. So how do you build that trust? Okay, sure, there are things you could do on the paid ad side to warm them up with the video and then retarget them to your page with, the, with an offer, but it goes a lot deeper than that. And this is where this idea of social proof came in. And so the conversation this morning was, okay, so when they start selling this new product, that they are putting to market in a couple of weeks, um, what has to happen for people to think it's a no brainer to support them? Well, first off, um, you need a great early bird offer or an incentive to buy early, right? But secondly, the customer, especially on new products, sure, they wanna be an early adopter and support you, but what's even more important and what's more challenging as a new product is you may not have built a trust profile or I guess portfolio, which is social proof. So we did a great brainstorming session by looking this morning, by looking at the assets that the two or three brands had and looked at how we can really leverage that. And the conversation was so effective that I wanted to, I guess, do a little thing with you today because the reality is that a lot of first time creators not even first time, even established brands, sellers online. I'm talking to a broad audience here, but like when you are selling a product online, what do you do when you're launching a new product and you literally have one, two, or maybe even three prototypes? How do you get social proof when you're limited to the number of people that can use it? Okay. So I want you to think outside the box and know that you do not have to wait until you have hundreds of customers using your product in order to start building social proof. Okay. You want to use the resources you have today and then leverage that across multiple platforms. So I'm going to challenge you for new products. Here's what I would do. If you literally have one prototype, 
you want to play test with as many people as possible. This is part of the testing process. So play testing means that you are going to a friend if you're in the dog space with a dog product, you're going to go to a friend that has a dog and get them to use your product. If it's a game, you're going to play this game with as many people as possible. You're gonna get real people that you know using your product, regardless of what it is. If it's a campfire grill, you do it, right? You do this not only to make sure the product is sound mechanically, but you also can use those stories when you have your friends using it and play testing, take photos, take videos, get a quote from your friend. When you start posting on social media about, hey guys, I've been dormant for a while, but this is the awesome product we're bringing to market very soon. When you post that in Facebook groups, when you go to your profile, when you post it on LinkedIn, when you're having conversations with people, you're going to be able to take the public comments that people say with like, wow, this thing is a game changer or wow, I'm so excited for this thing or any positive, of course, public comments that you get around your product are things that you can screenshot, get permission to use their name, of course, or just blur it out. But take those like those excitement things as proof that the party you're setting up when you actually go to launch a product, people want to be a part of that. So think of how can you use what little resources you have to leverage that across multiple platforms to build a social proof um, trust profile that is amazing, okay? So here's how you do that. Um, if you don't have actual customer reviews, if you're pre-launch, use, um, like what people are posting, uh, uh, commenting on your Facebook ads or even just your profile, like grab those, the, that, those like bits of excitement, amazing, right? Um, especially ones that say, take my money, like those are awesome, right? Because that's proof that people want it, proof of excitement. So you can, you could take those quotes, you could put it on your landing page, you can put it on your coming soon storefront page, you can put it on for Instagram to plug your product, you can put it in your email signature, really anywhere where the conversation has to happen around how awesome your thing is with a quote, do that. And you can even like when you're actually using your product with people, um, see if you can build, take it a step further and don't just like take quotes. Quotes are amazing, obviously, but build case studies. Okay. So a case study is an opportunity for you to highlight your customer in terms of how they are using your product. So for example, this, um, I don't think that the monk manual is doing this, but monk manual is a 90 day planner that we worked with for their launch. And so if I wanted to use a case study around the monk manual, I would contact some of our most avid fans that are actively using the monk manual month over month and I would interview them. I would do a video interview and talk to them about how their life has changed because of using my product, okay, or the bunk manual. I would ask them how they're using the product. And essentially, you are able to go a lot deeper into someone's experience with the product, how they're using it, what kind of people use it. And when you can build a video case study interview like this, you're able to highlight your customers, which who doesn't like to be the poster child for something, okay? Um, actually, some people, introverts, probably not, but like you are gonna be able to pull out some of your biggest fans, biggest customers that are obsessed with your product after you've delivered and use those case studies to highlight how other people are using the product. So that's like taking it a whole step further than um, than just a quote. And giving that depth to the product is really going to highlight and really help to not convince, but like just convey and really, really build that trust. And it looks amazing too when you have an opportunity to talk to your customers. They appreciate it so much. It's something you need to constantly be doing. So there's like that doing the video case study route and getting that on YouTube, on a blog and circulating that. Of course, that's a ton of work, but oh my gosh, that helps you sell so much more product because you're the face of the brand, you're talking to your customer, you could interview them and get ideas for future products, 
but also convey in like a 20, 30 minute segment how someone is using your product and why their life is better because of that, okay? So I love, 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 love doing case studies. That's what I do from a coaching side, which is why you see some, like me doing interviews with my clients. So if you think of how to apply that for your product business, that's one amazing way you can do it. Um, and you don't have to wait until you've produced your product to do that. Like if you are play testing, with like, if you're play testing with someone, you can interview your customer about different ways they see themselves using it, what they liked about the product, um, just things like that, you know, those, those on camera testimonials and case studies are huge. So I do want to, in this video, I really wanted to make sure that I was getting you to think of a not so obvious thing that hurts conversions. But when you start to incorporate social proof, a lot earlier than you think you can into your brand strategy, you're gonna help, you're gonna make sure that you are converting a significant more, uh, a significant more traffic because you're able to build trust that much faster through the use of social proof. So this is what this video is about. If you have um, any ways that you found work super well to build social proof, or you want feedback on how your existing site can have more social proof, drop stuff in the comments, happy to look at it. And uh, apart from that, um, I think that's great. So if you are looking for help launching your next product or scaling your existing e-commerce business from six to seven figures, come talk to me. There's a link in the description, or you can also just go to this one here, which is kirsten.com slash video. Apart from that, thanks for watching. And let me know if you have any other questions for other videos that I can uh, post. I'm gonna stop rambling. So thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. See ya.